So in the last video, we learned about applied optimization and we did the kind of classic problem where you're trying to maximize the amount of land that you could fence in a rectangular plot if you only have a given amount of fencing. What I wanna do in this video is just another example, kind of doing the same thing, but it might feel a little bit different. So I think it's beneficial to go through the example. What we're gonna look at is a three dimensional optimization problem, which might sound really hard, but it turns out that it's not. Instead of looking at a rectangle, I'm gonna look at a box. So I'll try my best to draw a three dimensional box here. Sure, I guess that'll work. And we wanna maximize this box. Maybe we want the maximal volume if we're really trying to throw around the right vocabulary words of this square based box. Okay, so that's important. When you think about volume, you might think about like, I don't know, length times width times height or something. But the fact that it's square based means that the length and the width of the bottom of this box are the exact same in order for it to be a square. So maybe I call that, I don't know, X. If X represents this length, it also represents this length because this base is a square. I don't know the height of the box, so maybe I'll use the letter H to represent that. And with these letters, instead of thinking about volume as length times width times height, maybe I think about it as X times X times H. In other words, X squared H. I have a function which tells me volume, but it's a function of two different variables, the letter X and the letter H. Fortunately, there's a constraint that I haven't used yet. I only have 600 square feet of cardboard with which to make this box. So here's where you have to be a little bit clever and see these things kind of in three dimensions. If I sort of unfolded this box, if I cut along this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge, and then these three up top, I could kind of unfold this box to get it to kind of look like this. In case you have a hard time seeing this, this square base would kind of end up right here. And then this front face would be here, the left face over here, the right face over here, the back face, right here and the top up here. Anyways, unfolding this three dimensional box into two dimensions like this helps us see our constraint. We only have 600 square feet of cardboard. Call this the base and this may be the front and this the left and this the right and this the back and this the top. The base and the top are both gonna be X by X, but the four other faces, the ones kind of going around the outside here will each be X by H. So if you think about the total amount of cardboard being used, it's the sum of the cardboard used for each of these different faces. And this is how much cardboard is used for each face. What I'm saying is from all of this information, I can figure out my constraint in terms of my variables X and H. I got 600 is equal to 2X squared because I have two faces that have an area of X squared plus 4XH because I have four faces that have an area of X times H. A little bit harder this time to come up with my function and my constraint, but now that I have a function of two variables and a constraint that ties together those two variables, I'm kind of home free. All I gotta do is solve my constraint for one of the two variables and plug that in up here. Which one should I solve for? Well, you can do either one, but I think your life will be a lot easier if you solve for H. Because if you try to solve for X here, it's gonna be pretty complicated, right? You got an X squared term and an X. How are you gonna get X all by itself? You can do it, you can complete the square, but you probably don't want to. I think it's easier to solve for H, so let's do that. 600 minus 2X squared would be equal to 4XH if I subtract 2X squared from both sides. And now to get the H all by itself, all I gotta do is divide both sides by 4X, and I get H is equal to 600 minus 2X squared divided by 4X. Because I know what H is equal to, I can plug that in up here to get a function for volume that doesn't involve both X's and H's, it only involves X's. Because I'm gonna change all the H's into 600 minus 2X squared over 4X. So volume as a function of just X would be X squared times, and then instead of writing this H, I'm gonna write this H, 600 minus 2X squared divided by 4X. Now that we know volume as a function of just one variable, we can figure out critical values, make sure the critical value represents a local maximum, be done with the problem. In order to figure out critical values, you gotta take the derivative. Taking the derivative the way this is written would be kind of miserable, but fortunately this simplifies really nicely. This X and one of these X's cancel out. And then I can make this 600 divided by four minus two X squared divided by four. 600 divided by four is 150. So when all the smoke settles, I think I'm left with 150 X in my first term and one half X cubed in my second term. The two over the four gives me the one half. 
and then I have x squared and another x squared divided by an x, so x to the fourth over x, so x cubed. You might want to pause and make sure that you can algebraically show that this is equal to this. But once you get there, figuring out critical values is a lot easier. For critical values, we need the first derivative. The first derivative of this form on the right is pretty easy to figure out. The derivative of 150x is just 150, and the derivative of 1 half x cubed is 3 halves x squared. Now that I have the first derivative, I find critical values by taking that and setting it equal to zero. So I got 150 minus 3 halves x squared equals zero. If I add 3 halves x squared to both sides, I got 3 halves x squared is equal to 150. Multiply both sides by two and then divide by three. I get x squared is equal to 100. So x is plus or minus the square root of 100, in other words, 10. However, since we're talking about lengths here, x can't be equal to negative 10. So x equals 10 is the only critical value that's relevant to this problem. That happens a lot in optimization problems. You get two critical values, but really only one makes sense. That's the one we want to look at. This critical value will end up being the optimal value that we need, but it's not a bad idea just to confirm that. So I'll do some optional work up here to show you that. I need to know the second derivative, v double prime of x. Using this first derivative, when I take a second derivative, I get negative 3x for the second derivative. This goes to zero. I bring the two down in front. Negative 3 halves times two is negative three, x to the first power. I wanna evaluate that second derivative when x is equal to 10, my critical value. I get negative three times 10, in other words, negative 30. The important thing is that I get a negative number. Therefore, v of x is concave down when x equals 10. And therefore, this critical value is a local maximum. And if you felt the need, you could check endpoints as well. You could be like, x can't be any less than zero, so that's one endpoint. And x can't be any more than the square root of 300, because if x is the square root of 300, then you're using up 300 square feet of cardboard on the top and the bottom, and you have zero left over for the height. But in both of those cases where x is the square root of 300, when where x is equal to zero, the volume of this box ends up being zero which is definitely less than the volume that we get when x is equal to 10. So endpoints, again, aren't relevant and they never will be in this section. And the critical value represents the optimal value that we are looking for, in this case, a local maximum. This problem wasn't written really clearly, but I think what I was going for here is what is the maximal volume of a square-based box if you have 600 square feet of cardboard? What we figured out is not the volume, we figured out the length of one side of the square base. But the good news is once we know x, we can figure out h pretty easily because in our constraint, we have h solved for in terms of x. So h would be equal to 600 minus two times 10 squared divided by four times 10. So 600 minus 200 divided by 40, 400 over 40. It looks like h would be equal to 10 as well. Now that we know x and h, we know the dimensions of the box, but if we want to figure out the volume of the box, we could either take x and plug it into this equation, or we could take x and h and plug them into this equation. It really doesn't matter, whichever one you prefer. Either way, what you'll figure out is that the volume is exactly 1,000 cubic feet. I'm not too worried about units, so I'll just leave it as 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10. You might notice that in the first example that we did in the previous video, both the length and the width ended up being 30. And in this example that we did here, both the length and the width and the height all ended up being equal to 10. That happens a lot when you're looking to maximize either volume or area, but it's not always the case. If we mess with our rectangle a little bit like we did over here and only fence three sides of it, then we don't end up with this square. The length doesn't end up as the width. And if we mess with this box a little bit, like for example, maybe we say that the box has an open top. Then that'll kind of throw off the symmetry and we won't end up with the length equal to the width equal to the height. So let's do one more problem that at first glance appears very similar to the problem that we did up here. You might even want to pause and see if you can do this on your own. Just a couple of comments. This box has an open top, so there is no top right here. So we're not using up any cardboard down here. This will be completely gone. The other comment is it's kind of tricky to figure out what the function is and what the constraint is down here. I kind of switched some stuff around. So maybe take a second and see if you can figure that out. In the example that we just did, it was the maximal volume that we were looking for. In this example, it's the minimal 
but not volume, the minimal cardboard necessary. In the last one, the cardboard was the constraint and the volume was the thing we were trying to maximize. In this one, the cardboard is the thing we're trying to maximize and the volume ends up being the constraint. So that's kind of tricky. And then to make things even trickier, I made an open top. Let's see how this all works out. We want the minimal cardboard necessary. Can we write a function, maybe C for cardboard, in terms of both X and H, where X and H represent the same things they represented up here. X is the length of one side of the square base. Well, let's see, I don't have this top anymore, so there's a base and then there's the four sides. The area of the base is still x times x or x squared, and the area of each of the four sides is x times h. So the total amount of cardboard used would be x squared, cardboard for the base, plus four times xh, the cardboard for each of the four bases. Very similar to what you see over here, except instead of two x squareds, we only have one x squared, and instead of this representing the constraint, this now represents the function. Okay, if this isn't the constraint, then what is the constraint? Well, we need an 8,000, I guess this should be cubic foot box. The volume of the box must be 8,000. The volume is the length times the width times the height, but the length and the width are both x, so the volume, which has to be equal to 8,000, is x times x times h, in other words, x squared h. The thing that used to be the function is now the constraint. That's a little bit tricky, but the method's gonna be the same. We wanna solve this equation for one of our two variables. It doesn't matter which one, probably a little bit easier to solve for h. h is equal to 8,000 divided by x squared. Now that we've solved for h using our constraint, we can plug that in over here to come up with a function of just one variable, the letter x in this case. The way we do that is we rewrite exactly what we see here, except we change all the h's into 8,000 over x squared. I now have a function which tells me how much cardboard I'm gonna use to build this square-based box with an open top in terms of just x, the length of one side of the base. I'm looking for critical values, so I need the derivative of this function. You could take the derivative the way it's written right now, but it'll make your life a lot easier to simplify this a little bit. Eight times four is 32, so I got 32,000 divided by this x and one of these x's cancel out. So x squared plus 32,000 over x. In other words, x squared plus 32,000 times x to the negative one power. In this form, it's pretty easy to find the derivative. C prime of x would just be two x plus, I'll leave the 32,000 alone because that's a coefficient and then bring the negative one down in front to get negative 32,000. And then if I subtract one from the exponent, I get x to the negative two power. Here's my first derivative for critical values. I set this equal to zero. So I got zero equals two x minus 32,000 x to the negative two power. You can leave it as x to the negative two power if you want, or you can rewrite it as one over x squared to make it a little bit easier to solve. To solve this equation for x, maybe I'd add this term over to the other side, giving me 32,000 over x squared equals two x. Then I'd multiply both sides of the equation by x squared to get 32,000 equals two x cubed. Divide both sides by two, then I get 16,000 is equal to x cubed. And then take the cubed root of both sides of the equation to get x is equal to the cubed root of 16,000. I don't know what the cubed root of 16,000 is, but Google does. Let's see, cubed root of 16,000, it looks like it is about 25, 25.2, give or take. But really, I'm not so concerned with coming up with a decimal approximation. I already had my answer at this step, that x is equal to the cube root of 16,000. But be a little bit careful. Is this really what we're looking for? This question asks, what's the minimal amount of cardboard necessary if you were building this box? What we just figured out is the optimal length of one side of the base of this square-based box would be the cube root of 16,000. And really, all we figured out is that that's a critical value, I guess, we really should make sure that that critical value represents a local minimum since we're trying to minimize the amount of cardboard necessary. As we've seen before, that critical value will end up being the correct answer, but it's not a terrible idea to double check by taking the second derivative, which is just the derivative of what's written here. In other words, two plus 64,000 times x to the negative three power, or two plus 64,000 divided by x cubed. 
and then evaluating that second derivative at this critical value. C double prime of the cubed root of 16,000, which is two plus 64,000, divided by the cubed root of 16,000 cubed, in other words, 16,000. You can figure this out if you want. I think this ends up being equal to four, and two plus four gives you six, but really you don't care so much about the value. All you care about is that the second derivative is greater than zero at this critical value. So my function C of X is concave up when X is equal to the cubed root of 16,000. So that critical value at the cubed root of 16,000 is a local minimum which is good since we were trying to minimize the amount of cardboard necessary. You could even look at endpoints if you really wanted, but for volume being equal to 8,000 cubic feet, it's not obvious where the endpoints would end up being. And they don't end up being important, so you could probably just skip that. Anyways, all this work in red was just to prove that this answer that we got in dark blue here, where x is equal to the cube root of 16,000, isn't just any critical value. It's a local minimum, and it turns out a global minimum. So we're done? Well, almost. Really the question asked, what is the minimal amount of cardboard necessary? All we figured out is, in order to minimize the amount of cardboard necessary, we'd want x to be equal to the cube root of 16,000. But that doesn't really answer the question. The answer to the question would be c of that critical value, the cube root of 16,000. Fortunately for us, we have c of x written right here. So I just copy what I see here to get that the minimal amount of cardboard necessary is the cubed root of 16,000, whatever that number is, about 25.2, squared plus 32,000 divided by the cubed root of 16,000. Again, 32,000 divided by that 25.2, give or take. If you don't like leaving your answers as expressions, I suppose you could throw that into Google or a calculator or something. Take that value and square it, and then add 32,000 divided by that value, and you'd get about 1,905. I guess square feet would be our unit here. If you wanted an 8,000 cubic foot box with a square base and no top, you would need 1,905 square feet of cardboard in order to construct that box. The key takeaway for this video that I tried to show in these two examples is you gotta be really careful with what your function is and what your constraint is. The easiest way to find that is look for words like maximal or minimal, and those will denote your function. We want the maximal volume in this first one, so volume must be the function. We want the minimal cardboard here, so the cardboard must be the function. The other piece of information, the one with the numeric value in there, will end up being our constraint. In this case, we only had 600 square feet of cardboard. That was our constraint. In this case, we needed an 8,000 cubic foot square based box with an open top. That's our constraint. Write your function typically in terms of two variables and then take your constraint to solve for one of those two variables to give you a one variable function. Then it's just repeat the stuff you learned from the previous sec. First derivative, critical values, classify the critical values, and you're done.